Do we have Spanish translation? Yes, we do. We have we have Yatsi Ponce here to provide Spanish translation. Would you please introduce yourself? In la lengua de la gente. <laughs> Good. Doesn't Thank look you. like we have anyone in need. Assistant. Okay, we have welcome from Veronica Rogers, principal of Glida Valley Junior High School. Good morning, Veronica Rogers, and I'm so glad that you're here. Um, first, second week of school, and our numbers are up, and our API is up as well, but it's embargoed. But nobody, knows <laughs> nobody knows that yet. I just wanted to. <laughs> I did want to share, before school started, we as management made uh, district board focus goals very carefully, and um, we also met in small groups to review them. We made some district-wide commitments, and then from that, following our Teach Like a Champion book that we uh, reviewed and worked as a workbook with, um, we brought that to our staff at Goleta Valley, and I'm proud to say I expected two commitments from my teachers, two big ones, and they came up with four from that exercise. And one of them is that in all of our classrooms, you'll see this poster that was developed and new to Goleta Valley, and it's how to be a star at Goleta Valley. And these are some of the strategies that came out of the Teach Like a Champion book. Mm -hmm. And one of our first commitments school-wide is that every student has an agenda. This is our fourth year with that commitment, and that the entry that students make into a classroom throughout our campus. They walk in, they're ready to be um, working with a binder and agenda, um, and they're in their seats prepared. That's the entry. Not running through the door. That would be a tardy. <laughs> so we made that commitment school-wide. We also made the commitment of do now. In every classroom, you'll see an agenda and homework posted, and students, and a warm-up exercise on the board, so they have something to do right when they get going. And another strategy then was um, commitment of no gum or tardies on campus, and then our consequences as well. But it says very clearly, you're on time if you're on your seat and I'm prepared and ready to go, and then you'll be a star. And all students at Goleta Valley, and this accounts for adults as well, we expect, <laughs> we expect them to sit up straight, track the speaker, ask and answer questions like a scholar, and then respect all those around them. So. We're off to a great start, uh, up in enrollment, looking for staffing, um, and <laughs> all is well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, principals are so good at just squeaking that one in. <laughs> so, Thank you. Welcome. Buddy. Do you have any questions about Goleta Valley? Oh, you don't oh, want to oh, go oh, there. Oh. <laughs> they know they know me pretty well. <laughs> We're doing well with what we have. <laughs> Thank well, you. Add, uh, board members, you saw that we were doing uh, the finalization of textbook checkout here, and I was talking to one of the teachers. I was kidding one of the teachers. I said, "So, you've not you haven't been teaching anything the last two weeks," and she she really actually took offense at it. She said, she said, you know, everything we teach is not out of the textbook. We started day one, and we've been writing hard, so I, I was pleased to hear that sort of a response, actually. And that is our commitment. The, the days are numbered. They go very quickly, and there's a lot of content that we want our students to be able to know to be successful. And we're moving up. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish I didn't have textbooks all around, but it's school. <laughs> we understand. Morning, Bob. Hour to speak and public then, comment then fill it out yeah. you want to get let's give her a microphone
I'm running late for every time. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, I'm grateful to um, be able to be here. Um, this is regarding, obviously, the um, settlement agreement that was approved by the board. Uh, thank you very much. It's going to be, it's going to be a little bit of help. First of all, I would like to stress the fact that um, educational compensatory uh, services money doesn't um, compensate for uh, loss of an education and uh, loss of self-esteem and loss of opportunities for students. My student is 20, and I will, with from the bottom of my heart, to uh, stress the importance of not letting this happen in the future. You don't need to give educational compensatory education, obviously, with all the budget problems and everything. Um, second of all, my husband is really, really concerned about something. Um, you may or may not need to know, but uh, he was told that the educational compensatory money that is going to pay for reading therapies and um, math tutoring to be able for my son to catch up a little so he can be able to earn a high school diploma or get a job somewhere. Um, now it's going to be tax deductible, meaning like uh, almost a third of the money is going to go to the I IRS back. And I'm just concerned about that. So uh, whatever happens, um, we don't want Michael to get a tax paper in the future next year so he can have to give back the money because then we're going to be in trouble because we don't have that kind of money. Thank you. Thank you. You want to address that? Uh, we will now go to uh, the oh, I, I just want to ad address Mr. Rubin's uh, comment. Actually, we verified with legal counsel yesterday it's not taxable. Any settlement that's related to a personal injury, whether it's to somebody's person or psyche, is, is not taxable. So I'm, I'm surprised that message did not get to you yet, but I know it's coming. And I did convey that to Carol Miller yesterday. Microphone. Well, uh, Ms. Okay. Okay. We're gonna Ms. Miller will be in contact with you then. Good. Thank you. Uh, item B1, discussion of board self-evaluation. You have uh, in front of you the list of questions, or not questions, comments that we were, we were um, <coughs> asked to sort of uh, respond to and to get the discussion sort of where we want to go, uh, I asked each of you to at least let us know some of the questions that you thought were uh, most relevant to your way of thinking. And there's one, there's nine that came out of that. I thought we would focus, start with those nine and then feel free to talk about any topic we want to talk about. But since those nine were specifically brought out, I thought I'd like to focus on those first. And if it's okay with everyone, I'll just start with number five. And anybody who wants to comment can. And we'll just go through those first and then uh, open it up to any other question that you might ask about. Um, but first, let me just ask first. How do you feel about this type of evaluation questionnaire? Is it, this is, I know we've used the same one in the past. This has eight or nine additional questions that the previous one didn't have on it. And um, uh, just curious, discussion on, on this type of a questionnaire. Anybody comment? I'll jump in, I guess. Um, I, I felt that it was useful in helping to think about the areas that we wanted to evaluate. And I think probably every year I would go in and some of the questions, delete them, add some, depending on how helpful I had found them. Um, so I'm not sure that I would ever necessarily think we had the final draft or, or that it would ever be final because our, our interests and um, focus might change from year to year. But I found it helpful. Mrs. Deacon? I would agree with that. And, um, and also with Mrs. Cordero, that the questions might change from year to year. I like the open-ended response option mm -hmm. because I think that gives everyone an opportunity to really express some feelings that might not necessarily evidence any other questions. But for me, just reviewing it this year, I think, is an incentive 
to do the kinds of things that we've identified as important, for particularly this one about keeping the goals in front of us throughout the year because we're constantly reminded, yes, we need to do that. And so it, it has that beneficial effect. Mrs. Parker? Um, the one comment that I would add is that we have uh, four columns that range from strongly agree to strongly disagree, but then we have an importance column. And as we review for the next year when it's time to um, sort of update the self-evaluation evaluation questionnaire, I would really like us to use that importance column, ones that had more zeros and ones in terms of whether or not this was important to the board role, board function. Maybe those are ones that we could either remove or change. Um, and can use that as a tool. Okay. Uh, question number five. The board sets annual goals and keeps those goals at the forefront of all board and district decisions throughout the year. Uh, let me just make one comment. I also found it interesting that of the people who did respond with questions, there was only one that two of us agreed on. <laughs> and so it, it tells me that um, each of us has different ideas as to you know, some of the important questions. Uh, I found that very interesting. Sets annual goals and keeps those goals at the forefront. Um, this discussion on that one, uh, Mrs. Deacon started on that. And, uh, uh, you made a comment just a minute ago that keeping them in front of us constantly is very important. Dr. Noel. Important but hard. Uh, and and the, the point being that the goals are usually set at such a global level and the business of meetings is often gets pretty detailed, often is determined by administrative considerations over which the board has no control. In fact, but things have to be brought to the board uh, by state deadlines, a whole variety of things that we have to deal with uh, that you all bring to us. I presume you bring them to us for a reason. And yeah, we I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we could sit here and, and, and trace links back to our focus goals, uh, but I'm not sure how significant that exercise would be. Well, it just makes a lot of sense to have a set of goals that we're, we're always mindful of and trying to uh, reflect on what we do. It's extremely difficult at times to lose sight of them, uh, uh, since that's been our meeting all the time. I've heard the comments over the, year, over the last year and a half that it would be nice on the agenda to somehow identify or, or link any topic we talk about to the goals. I don't know if that's even possible based upon what you just said. It'd be an exercise. But is there any thought to, and some, maybe some key items to say, what focus goals do this apply to? Mrs. Parker? Yes, and, and I think that there's some agenda um, templates that do that that we could take a look at. Um, that might be interesting to see. Yeah, I actually don't think that, I mean, I think maybe at first it would take a bit of extra effort and time um, but I think once it was sort of established I don't think it would take a lot of additional time or effort on the part of the staff who prepare the agenda items because um, it should be fairly clear you know what we're trying to accomplish with this particular item and you know we, we really I'm sure you know can have some, some something of a template mm -hmm that would allow it to get in. And I think what I would find helpful about it is just to, to, it would help me, it would help keep reminding me of where we're going and what we're trying to accomplish with the things that we do. Um, and it would also help me to think about, do I think this is the best way to accomplish that goal? Um, are we doing the right things to accomplish that goal? So I would find it useful to do that. Um, I think it would, it would just, be a, a consistent reminder of our goals. Dr. Uh, Newell. I would, I would suggest that we start by not trying to do the consent agenda. <laughs> right? And uh, at least stick to the main, to the main agenda item for, as a trial. Mm -hmm. Consent agenda gets pretty hairy. Mm -hmm. Deacon? We do, um, on the, the memos for items, we list the funding source. Mm -hmm. It might be that we just have a line at the bottom that says focus goal and we don't want to stretch it when it there isn't application, but when there obviously are things, like when we discuss our gate and honors program, for instance, 
that would directly tie to one of the focus goals. So it seems to me there, there would be definite items that we could easily link to those goals. And like Mrs. Cordero said, it would help us focus and discuss those items in light of how we want to achieve our goals. So I like that idea. You'll, <coughs> you'll notice uh, on the importance, this one has a unanimous mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. So there is, um, maybe you can take a look at this, uh, Dr. Sarvis Robin, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, be happy to. And maybe it is a way, just like, like Mrs. Deacon said, just add one other line, just to add, you know, what's the focus goal? <laughs> Be great to do this next year, and that. You know, I I would think our difficulty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Starting December, yeah. it, <laughs> I would think that our difficulty would be primarily in identifying which goal is most related right. to it. Uh, for instance, all of these uh, hiring decisions, you know, who we bring in, when we release people as a budgetary item, or uh, when we ask for your approval for someone who doesn't have the credential, uh, the, the clear credential, but has experience in that area and is in a training program. Uh, those could all be linked to a number of goals having to do with student achievement, could be linked to school culture and safety. Uh, so I would think that that would be our largest difficulty, figuring, figuring out just which <coughs> goal is most salient. I don't, I don't think any of us want a huge amount of time spent on this. In other words, if there's an initial impact of what it is, great. If, if there isn't one, we don't want you searching for one. It's just if it's appropriate, put one in as a reminder to us. Mm -hmm. um, it could but be more than one. Too. It could be more than one. Yeah. But it's not something we want to, we don't want to create a whole bunch of extra work or thought process. Just what's the initial off the top kind of thing to start with anyway. Any other comments on question five? Uh, question seven, the board president runs an orderly meeting with clear instructions and directions to the public as well as board members. Uh, we also have on B3 um, the topic of our, our no, uh, topic two, two. B2, two. is uh, how board conducts board meetings. If it would be more appropriate to keep that one till then, I don't know what, what you want to yeah. comment on it now. I think it's okay. Uh, number nine, the board recognizes and protects the district chain of command. Uh, one, two, and four fours as far as importance. Uh, three, disagree. Uh, two, agree. So the chain of command. Um, three people think we do not recognize uh, the district chain of command. Thoughts on that? Mrs. Parker? Um, I, I think I certainly have been as guilty of this as anybody, and that is, uh, especially when you have interactions with the general public where there's a problem going on, and there's a tendency for us and for me to sometimes try to, to help too much, to help directly and send them rather than, um, oh, I mean, I always try, right, <laughs> to, uh, to bring in the superintendent, but um, I, I think that we just have to be really vigilant about that um, so that it's the superintendent that is ultimately resolving the issue that we're assisting the public. Um, and that's something that I see sometimes happens. I, um, in one of the open-ended responses, one of my responses about, I think it's, how could the board do its job better? I talked about instead of trying to fix things ourselves, we should charge staff with responsibility and then follow up. And I, I think that has to do with several of these items, but certainly that one as well is that I, again, I think I need to protect from my own instinct to sometimes to try to charge out and, and fix things rather than always going directly to Brian for you know, figuring out the best way that I can have give input, but so that it follows the chain of command. And then I guess our role is to make sure that things are actually done and, and that we follow up as opposed to just responding and then not knowing what happened. Well, one of my concerns with that is I'm not sure that we all agree what the chain of command is. Mm -hmm. I think each of us maybe has our own sense of what the chain of command is. Do you start with Brian and then let Brian 
go through the the steps of who who should this um, question or, or concern actually begin with? Or do we begin with the person that we think it belongs with um, and let it work up to Brian? Um, and what's the role? I think this ties a little bit back to the role of the board, you know, because I certainly feel like it's not really the role of the board to go to individual staff members. That that's not the chain of, for me, that's not the chain of command. Um, that I would take it to Brian and then Brian would either direct me to the staff member or Brian himself would, would address the staff member. But I don't know that we all agree that that's where, how, how it works. So I think part of the issue is that we've never really talked about as a board what we agree the chain of command is. So I think we, you know, I certainly might perceive that somebody else is going outside the chain of command, but that person might perceive that I'm going outside the chain of command. So. <laughs> May I step yes. into the discussion? Uh, and by the way, with the student noise, it works just fine, I understand, because we have the microphones here, okay. so we don't have to worry about that. We love student noise. Um, this has evolved in different ways, and it's evolved in different ways for different board members. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the most part, I'm very comfortable with you going to one of the three of us who you know can answer your question best or can give you more information because I'm always concerned about bottlenecking things in the superintendent's office and having nothing move faster than the superintendent can move. Uh, so if I'm stacked up, often by this time of the week, uh, I'm stacked up in emails and, and I won't be doing them until the weekend. It just won't happen because things are, are scheduled. Um, and if you can get an answer quicker, more quickly than that, uh, or if you want to go directly to one of these other people uh, who are a deputy superintendent and associate superintendent, I'm very comfortable with that. But, I'm sorry, but we shouldn't go to other levels of staff directly. Well, is that what, kind of the idea or no? What, what, yeah, one of the difficulties is that uh, we do have people who then come to me and say, my gosh, all my time's being gobbled up uh, with a board member rather than, you know, doing the things I need to get done. And that does become a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Noel. I'm thinking about if a, if a uh, parent contacts a board member and has a problem on it, site uh, whether that whether the chain of command is includes goes the principal or go around the principal and go directly to Robin or, and Brian which in some sense is sending a very strong message to the principal already that you may not really want to send because it may be something that well with a, with the, through the good offices of the board member it can be worked out between the principal and the parent and you can't have the lower at a much lower level and that, that general principle, working things out at a lower level, pretty good principle. But my, my particular pattern, I think, I, I think I usually CC him when I, when, I, when I talk to somebody. Maybe some of the questions I ask Eric are so specific and technical that I don't want to bother him. Generally, I will CC him on the response. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Parker? Or, or Mrs. Zawaski? I was going to say, when a parent calls me about an issue at a site, of course my first question is always, have you talked to the principal? Or even have you talked to the teacher? Sometimes it's even at that level. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, with board members, though, I'm, I'm wondering if that should come to me and then I would direct that parent to the principal. I think a lot of it has to do with the, the nature of the case. I mean, That's I, true. I got a call this weekend exactly about a site, about involving issues at the site, and there's no way I would talk to the principal about mm -hmm. a particular issue and mm -hmm. talk to him and him only. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I wouldn't suggest that, that you talk to the principal. Yeah. Obviously, I would have that parent if they hadn't spoken to the principal. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I'm, I'm saying that this is something, right. the nature of the issue is such that yeah. I, I don't even want to have it known that I have taken cognizance of it. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, it's, it's just, you have, it's a judgment call. 
But that sounds like it would then favor the, the practice of board members not necessarily directly interacting with the <coughs> site's administration, um, with, certainly not without having advised Robin, I would say. I would, I would, I would um, want to know yeah. if, if there were concerns, certainly. Well, yeah, and, and I have to say, you know, I've, mm -hmm. I've done that in the past where a parent had a c concern and I went with the parent to meet with the, the administration. And looking back on that, I probably, I, I would have certainly advised you first before having done mm -hmm. that. I, I mean, I think it worked out okay, mm -hmm. but, but it probably wasn't the best following of cha the, the chain of command. Um, I would have advised you that the parent had asked me to do that um, before having before actually doing it. Mrs. Parker, yeah, my concern with that, and I could completely see asking a parent when you get the response, it, when it's appropriate, have you, the parent, talk to the principal about it before I pass this on to the superintendent. You want me to take this to the district office, but or, or the associate superintendent. But um, my concern is what I find is principals um, are, are so. Uh, I don't want to say that they're odd, but they're in the <laughs> A-W-E-D sense. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Okay. Odd. They Thanks are, for that clarification. They are, I think, um, that we come on, and it feels very heavy, very intimidating when a board member co contacts a principal. And um, their chain of command is this route, you know, Robin and Brian. And... Um, I, I think it feels to them like that's being circumvented and therefore this is, um, you know, does my actual boss know? Because we're not their direct bosses. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that can get very confusing. So I, I think it's really important, especially uh, with site administration, that it, that it get, it go through Robin mm -hmm. and Brian. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's generally true. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And you often run the risk of micromanaging and stepping out of that mm -hmm. policy role and getting into actual management. Uh, that said, I have no difficulty with board members visiting with principals. I know a lot of you have various relationships where you, you're close to some of our administrators or you make it around to all the schools and you do want to talk to people, see what the issues are at the school, and, and they're happy to visit with you. But even in that role, they see that as, uh, as a, you know, a pretty heavy meeting. Mm -hmm. They don't take that lightly. Mm -hmm. Well, could I ask a question? When we get a, a question from a parent or a concern, I mean, it would, it's typically my reaction to write them a response because we want them to know that we're listening. Um, and, and that response might say something like, have you spoken to your principal about this? Or um, Robin Sawaski. And so would it be appropriate to CC you but not the principal on a response like that? I mean, I don't like principals to be blindsided that a parent is contacting a board member, but maybe it, it's better that it comes from you than from us? You know, I think going back to what Dr. Noel said, I think a, a lot of it depends on the individual, mm -hmm. what the situation is. Some simple thing mm -hmm. would be really easily copied. To the principal. If it's a little bit more sensitive, then and it I think yeah, it If it's a complaint about the principal, I understand that. Based yeah. on what, what Kate was just mm -hmm. saying, I mean, it, it is really important to the <laughs> notice for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, I think if, it, if it's a sensitive or a, a critical kind of criticizing kind of right. concern, yeah. I think it would, I would pers personally like it to go for me and I would share with Brian, of course. Mm -hmm. One of the hardest things I've had to learn is oftentimes we get letters or emails from to all of us about an issue. And coming back there were three or four that happened the last week. Sure. And I don't think there's any mechanism to keep us informed as to what's going on on those things. They're just out there, and you, ha you sit around wondering, what's happening? Is anybody doing anything? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there doesn't seem any, any proactive way, to keep, or even maybe a legal way, to keep us all informed on, on some of these major complaints um, without us having to go individually and ask on each one and I don't know how to resolve that, but my mind is, when, historically, when I wasn't on the board, 
in my business was I want to know what was going on. I want to know what was happening. I want to know if there was a complaint about one of my managers, what were they doing about it? And I don't feel that we as board members mm -hmm. have enough information or updates on what actually is taking place. Uh, the, the one that the, before I left, uh, which we did get updates on because at the meeting we got updates, um, was on the portable issue and the ventilation. And I thought at the meeting, you know, in your superintendent report or at some point, uh, we did get some information. But that's pretty, doesn't happen all the time. We get letters between meetings and um, they just sort of go out there and we just, I guess, in good faith, think everything's going well until we get another letter saying nothing's happened. You know? And so I, that getting that second letter that nothing's happened bothers me more than the first letter. We generally try to use the board brief or use some communication like that mm -hmm. in that our emails are actually public documents. Yeah. There is some concern about using right. emails and, and sending out to everyone what we did with this person and what that person said. Yeah. Uh, that's why I said I think there may, may be legal reasons, reasons we can't, but it just that seems to be something that bothers me a little bit. But I wonder if, um, if there might be a way then to sort of catalog the letters that we get to say, okay, maybe in the board brief, um, maybe as a, I don't know, a, a follow-up in, in closed session or something, um, of just, these are the, and actually now that I'm saying that, I don't even know that we could do that in closed session because most of them are not confidential. Um, but in some way, that doesn't make it overtly public um, in, in case the, the people don't want it public, is um, just say, you know, we got to, we, we wouldn't even necessarily have to identify the person, but just there was a complaint about ventilation and portables. There was a complaint about, you know, a teacher at Washington or, uh, you know, the, the lawn at Franklin or whatever. And then a brief, you know, comment of, you know, uh, Robin has addressed this with, with the teacher or um, this has been resolved with the parent or you know, whatever so that we know that it's been working on or this is a, there's an ongoing investigation or just whatever it is so that we don't have that sense that we got the complaint we all said whatever we said to the parent and then it just disappears because um, I've had that feeling too sometimes that I wonder, well, okay, I wonder what ever happened with that case. That parent was really concerned. Well, and, and I agree because if, if we reply to these parents and say we, we've passed your concern mm -hmm. along, but then we don't know if it's been followed up and there's kind of some anxiety at least at our end perhaps mm -hmm. and not knowing what's happened. And, and to me this even gets to some of these items here mm -hmm. about oversight mm -hmm. um, that you know, we have this <coughs> compact with the public that we you know, we're going to try to, to help them doing it through the right channels, but if we don't know, um, and I don't know if that means a, a phone call to each of us saying, by the way, this has occurred, because I know that's really time consuming. Mrs. Parker? My suggestion would be that, that when all five of us get an email, that that could be part of the role of the board president, that it would not be violating the Brown Act to send an email just to the board and the cabinet saying, uh, not the cabinet, but just to, to uh, whichever high-level people mm -hmm. are uh, involved in that particular case, that um, individual board members may have sent responses, but there will be information in the next board brief about this matter. Um, something like that, so that we know. Because I have had issues where I've, I've emailed back and said, oh, I'm sure you got this five different directions, and the person has said, actually, no. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're the first one that's emailed back. Oh. And so I, I do think that it, it can be an issue, mm -hmm. and, um, and it would be nice. And, and I, I think that that would be a suitable thing for the board president to do. Dr. Noel. Uh, hypothetical. Uh, student can't get into classes in high school. Uh, parent calls board member. My student will promise this class and can't, they won't let him in. Come to you. I think Robin. I think Robin. Go over the principal's head. 
Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the, the parent yeah. went over the principal's mm -hmm. head. The parent Way went to the board. <laughs> but and, and, but I'm trying to stay within the chain of command. Right. And it's you a, set Since policy. it's a local issue, it was a right. site issue, shouldn't I deal with it at the site level? Well, but your role is policy, so you alert us, and then we'll take on the management of that. See, I'm still, yeah, I was going to say, I'm starting to see that our chain of command starts at the top and goes down, um, not at the bottom and moving up. Um, because if we start at the bottom, then we're micromanaging. Um, so we start here and go the steps downward. And that's making a lot of sense to me. So I, I agree. I think in Bob's scenario, um, it would be. I would report it. I would probably have thought Robin, but whomever, whichever. Well, I blew it. I mean, that was real. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, <laughs> I blew it twice. <laughs> First, I, this is true I, confession. I, I, called, I called a counselor whom I know. Oh. And I thought, this person will, is pretty good at working things out. Mm -hmm. And then what I didn't do, apropos of Edgecombe, I never checked back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. I see. I, well, I think, but, I have, but silence is going. Yeah. I, but I think, in line with Mrs. Cordero, it works both ways. If if we if our chain of command starts at the top, we're making the presumption that it'll get down to the principal level. Mm -hmm. But I think what is missing in many in some cases is reaffirmation that the system that it worked. did that it did get that down. it did. Yeah. In other words, yeah. Uh, and so that, that reaffirmation yeah. of some of these things to keep us more fully informed of what's happening to the complaints that we hear, and that we do go in the right mm -hmm. direction, that it's some feedback mechanism to, so we don't have to lose sleep thinking about it. Yeah. And also because some, sometimes I've found that, you know, I have a tendency, I think we probably all do, when we hear from the parents, we automatically assume that whatever it is they're telling us is accurate. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yes. And sometimes, I mean, I think more than often, it, more often than not, it is accurate, but sometimes they've misunderstood something or there's a piece of information that they didn't, weren't given, that they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, or there's just a, sort of a disagreement about what the situation was. And so I think it's, you know, it's really important before we act, we, we need to make sure that, we're, that we are in uh, possession of all the information that's pertinent. Um, so that's always tricky because I think by and large, I don't, I don't think parents are usually, at least, um, you know, deliberately misleading us. But I think, you know, sometimes there's just more to the story than what, than what they think is. Sure. There's always the, two the sides. Right. Right. There's yeah. always two sides. So, so if we yeah. kind of just jump in with both feet, sometimes we end up with egg on our face, you know, because there was really something else that we hadn't considered. <laughs> well, which is, which is <laughs> all the more. What are the big? Oh, go ahead. Well, go I was right just going to say, which is all the more important yeah. for us. Yeah. Great metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> to follow. Sorry, as an English teacher, I shouldn't have mixed them. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we follow this top-down chain of command at our end, then then the information certainly gets to Robin and 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 down to the principals, so that if we want information back, everyone's in the loop. If we communicate directly with a board member or even a lower level site administrator, it may never work its way up mm -hmm. to Robin and then we have no expectation of getting the information back mm -hmm. in a unified way. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, it, it would really preclude things being dealt with locally and you right. never even learning about them and well, us it, maybe not hearing back. And it also, I mean, in my role of supervising, That's important. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to number 11. Well, I was going to okay. say, I was just going to segue because I was just going to say, I think that totally ties into number 11, <laughs> which is recognizing what's our work and what's the work of staff. Well, um, and sometimes I think we, and, we mix those up. And the difficulty for our administrators, uh, and it's not so much at the site level, uh, more for the directors, whether you can imagine a director of special education mm -hmm. or like director of facilities, uh, where if they're hearing from different board members, they're hearing from us, uh, they're hearing from their direct supervisor, maybe Dave Hetyunk is hearing from his direct supervisor, Eric, and then I step in and I want Dave to do some things. Now Dave has, has seven different projects that he's juggling and he has the difficulty of knowing which is the highest priority. 
and we don't really have enough time on a, on a daily basis to sit with the supervisor and set those priorities. We hire these people to make good decisions and to do that dance, but it's a difficult dance. To put question number 11 on the table, the board deliberations and actions are limited to board work, not staff work. Well, some of the, some of the uh, things that we're required to do by law are pretty nitty-gritty things, but uh, like adopting textbooks. So there's a there's a mix. I, I, it's very hard to it's very hard to find clean generalizations that, that cut through the, the variety of issues we deal with. That's why I keep coming back to you know, so much of it is just a judgment call, and, you know, and, and, and maybe maybe a CC rule. It's hard to find a rule. But Four of us disagree with that statement, which implies that we do a lot of staff work and not much. Um, Board work. So it sounds like we know it's terribly important. <laughs> Four think we do an awful lot of staff work. I'm curious as to in what context. Well, I just want to I oh. just wanted to clarify. Doesn't necessarily mean we don't do a lot of board work. No, no. We just do a lot we, of staff work right. as well. Yes, and, and I, I would ag agree with that. That I I didn't mean to apply. I'm probably one of the ones that wrote disagree here. Um, in, in we do our board work, but I think that some of us pick up some things that we have special interests and we have special skills and I think it's really important for us to realize when we're crossing the line and to not cross the line uh, without the rest of the board knowing and without it being like a specific request like somebody may have um, research skills writing skills software skills and, and we have that um, and it's really helpful um, but it needs to be something that the whole group knows, the whole board knows is happening, and it's happening uh, through agreement and not something that's happening individually. Right. Does and anybody have any examples of? Well, I, have, I was just thinking of examples, and, and Barbara's here, so she could maybe even address this and what might be the appropriate board role. But um, I've been hoping for some time that a press release go out about our college graduates, and I know all that information had been gathered, and there was some discussion with the Santa Barbara Education Foundation about buying an ad, and ultimately they decided not to. So I went back to Barbara and said, maybe now's the time to put this press release out, saying, you know, all our, you know, good luck, all our seniors or you know graduates, you know, you're starting your freshman year of college, and I don't know whether that's really an appropriate thing for me to do or how would be the, what would be the best way for me to indicate my desire for that to happen and this is not to say Barbara's not cooperating she's doing a wonderful job and, and I know it's going to happen but I don't know how appropriate that specific thing is for me to do. Well that's a, a great example for what my concern is because um, I want to go back to what Ms. Parker said about the, the whole board knowing about it because if Barbara does that which I might think is a great idea too um, but that means she's using her time which is a district resource I keep coming back to this idea that staff time is a district resource um, it's an expenditure of resources so if Barbara is going to do that it really ought to be that by the direction of the board rather than by the direction of one board member because I might go in and say to her, and I, and I would like you to do, blah, 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 blah. And now Barbara's doing, you know, a, stuff that's taking a fair amount of her time. Um, and the rest of the board might say, you know what? We think the things she's already doing are a higher priority than that. And we want her to spend all of her time on that. Um, and so it, that's a, like a perfect example of what, what I find of concern, is that when individual board members go in and ask staff members to do things that then use their time, then that's, to me, it's almost like a personal expenditure of district resources. It's coming from one person. Dr. Noel. We disagree every year on this. Uh, <laughs> uh, if it's a request for information, <clears throat> which is inherently public, uh, I, I don't, I have a problem with having to come to the board and say, I would like this information. Uh, I have the option to file a public records act request, which is far more onerous than just answering the question. Any member of the public can file a public records act request and get vast amounts of information. 
Uh, so, so I have a problem if it's, <coughs> if it's a reasonable request for information, uh, how to handle it. Uh, Davis is probably the guy I bother most. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I, I, think the, I, I think I try to CC Brian, but not always, because it depends on whether it's a big or a little one. Uh, because I mean, he, ha he's, he has the information. Uh, I just keep running through my mind trying to think about the case. But I think the problem here, too, is the question you've got to look and say, well, what, what is the nature of the request? And, uh, yeah, <coughs> I don't think anyone of us wants to <coughs> place undue burdens on, on staff members. Uh, but at the same time, you do want to be able to have access to the information uh, that's relevant to your, to your concerns. I think there's a little difference between yeah. requesting information from you know, versus saying, will you do this? Will you prepare well, this that, report? That's the same thing in some, in some yeah. cases. If I re, you know, some requests require him to do a lot of work. Well, I, he, that's, he, he, I think, he's, he's pretty but then that, that back would, at me and saying he can't do it. That'd be up to uh, Mr. Hayden, to Dr. Hayden, to say, you know, that's above and beyond my daily activities. Uh, I'll pour that on to Dr. Dr. Cyrus. Mrs. Parker? But I, I was also thinking of the other issue where um, we actually do the work sometimes. And a good example is the concept draw. Um, is that what it's called, the concept mm -hmm. draw software? Mm -hmm. Where terrific resource, and it was so fabulous that Dr. Noel you know, brought that in. Um, we, I only kind of heard about it peripherally at the board meeting that was really, you know, if we had the staff, that should have been their job to find it. But sometimes we, we have a special skill right here on the board. And I just think it's important that we know about that um, when. Well, I, I, I was with him 100% yeah. of the time on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I do not from the youth board. Right. So if board members, so Ms. Parker, you're saying if you think if board members are engaging in that kind of we might call it assistance yeah. um, to staff that it would be helpful if we then it, uh, at least inform the rest of the board. Yeah, and it could just be when we meet with the superintendent. What these we are some are. projects that are going on, yeah. and this is with, you know, staff yeah. want this to happen. Because um, I, 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 we, we do have skills that I think are really useful sometimes. Yeah. And, I'd like to speak to that as well. Sure. In fact, I'm tying in a number of these. Uh, and let me go back to the, the first instance. We thought that was a great idea. Barbara talked to me about uh, putting out the names of the schools that our, our students were going to. We were frustrated that we couldn't get those names at the time the students were graduating uh, because we thought the schools knew and the schools said, hey, well, we're swamped. We're doing all these other things and no, we can't get them to you right now. Uh, we did finally get them, and uh, as we stacked up, so, so we took it as a great idea. And as we stacked up the priorities and getting the letter out, and we thought, well, Q&R is going to be top of the list. That's going to be one of the most important things to get out to people. Uh, and in the middle of, of that list, a gravel truck came down 154, <laughs> and that stopped a lot of what uh, Barbara was trying to get done. So it just sort of stacked everything up. So we're ready to get out that list to the press now, uh, but we still want to get out the Q&R uh, fact sheet to mm -hmm. parents, information sheet, uh, and, and I not think advocacy. What I've learned, I, <laughs> yes. I would go to you. I should probably yes. go to you first to ask for that as opposed to I mean, I'm not going to manage but Barbara's time as no, much as I enjoy working with you. No, although you didn't yeah. see me, or at least right. uh, Barbara had talked to me to the extent that we thought it was just a great idea. And we do have board members who have particularly keen skills at uh, researching various things. Uh, there are a number of times when, when Ms. Parker, for example, has jumped out looking for the progressive schools that are, that are really making great gains or doing just offering to do some research that can be of help to us and we value that and I and I just want to clarify too because I think there is a big difference and I think this is probably what we did um, I think there's a big difference between making a suggestion like this is a re I think this would be a really great idea yes. I'd love to see it etc and saying I really mm -hmm. want this to happen mm -hmm. um, because staff are also often not in a, a very comfortable position 
if a board member is basically saying, I want you to do this, um, versus... Does that happen? <laughs> that, that is heavy-handed. Yeah, I think it does. Um, and versus saying, you know, I think this is... Uh, you know, this, I, I heard about this, or I thought about this. I think this would be a great idea. What do you guys think? You know, and I think that's probably the way that it went. Um, and I think we all do that. And that's, a, I think, a totally different matter. Um, but, the, but I wanted to also go back even to the issue of um, information requests. Because I think even for Freedom of Information Act, the, the information that people can request is limited to information that we have. Um, it doesn't require us to produce new reports in order to give it to them. Um, and so that's my concern too, is if we're asking for information that's already, that already exists, obviously that's not a problem. We all have the right to, to do that. But if we're asking for information that's going to take a great deal of time from a staff member to acquire or produce, then that does become a use of that person's time. And so then it might be reasonable for the rest of the board to know that that's being requested and that it's, and the staff member might even want to ex express how much time it will take to you know, put that all together. Um, because maybe there, there would be a better way of getting the information um, or, or getting to whatever <coughs> it is that the board member wants to know with that information. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that there is a distinction. Well, I, I need to make the point that in general, uh, we're staffed with people who want to do everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and they'd really like to provide all the information. And it's more a, a matter of prioritizing. Mm -hmm. So for instance, in Davis's case, uh, here's Dr. Hayden right at that time of year when all the state test reports are coming out. He has to crunch all of that. He has to make predictions to let the schools know how he thinks they'll stand. As it turns out, his predictions have been right on target, <laughs> uh, I'm pleased to say. Uh, but then producing those reports so that the sites can use them with their staff as their staff is returning, and then we can get good reporting on them, and the staff can start to, to make judgments about what they do instructionally as a result. Well, that's all a huge priority. So <coughs> I, I pull back personally on other things that I'm requesting him because I know that he's swamped with this task and I would hope that no one would be going to him right now at this time of the year asking for any other information. <laughs> oh, did, did it catch you? <laughs> well, but that's a good example. So uh, there are other things that I need to have produced uh, administratively so that we look, for example, at the efficiency with which we did staff and did schedule students well, that's a big task. That's that's a big project that we're going to take on this mm -hmm. year, particularly at the high school level. It has a lot to do with uh, with uh, our staying true to the budget, uh, with our loading those classes at the levels we expected them to be at. Um, but we're just going to wait on that for now. We've got other more press more pressing issues. Uh, in line with. Um staff work some of the, by nature some of the things we're involved in as board members um, put a little different flavor on it I, I'll, I'll use uh, mrs. Deacon being involved in special ed or, or dr. Noel special ed that's what concept draw brought him into the picture mrs. Deacon uh, the um, transportation vans uh, I know you had a role in that but as a result of being on the special ed task force and I, I know mrs. Parker is running for office found a situation about the fees they were charging for that that uh, um, being able to run for office and the research she did on that was above and beyond what normally can be done at a, a staff level mrs. Park and mrs. Cordero with Cesar, uh, Adelante being our representative she's gonna be involved in more nitty-gritty stuff um, and, and it might be classified as staff work all of those things but it's by nature of of the board saying do this that you get involved in those things I don't want to stop that from happening you know that's that be, because it's 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 on a different level than board um, you by nature get into more things and I think it's I think it's a positive Dr. Noel uh, legal questions do they cost us money 
Yes. Oh, and, yeah. and, Do uh, they ever? And, and I know I, good uh, I have been guilty, or I'm not sure of guilt, but uh, I know there have been times I've asked uh, Craig questions, uh, just one on one. Just directly? Yeah. Uh, he usually answers back to both of us, or to everybody. Uh, I, I can't remember all the instances. As often as, probably as often or more, I would ask the two of us. I'd ask you and him, or I'd ask you for legal opinion, but that may want some discussion. I think that's the one issue that our board policy are, are pretty clear on, is that the only, theoretically, not theoretically, according to board policy, uh, the board president is the one that makes those requests. Um, and so uh, Mr. Price probably shouldn't even reply to those unless he replies through Brian. Um, yeah, see, each, each board member has, has a right, right. Uh, to, legal, to, to legal services as pertains to that board member's exercise of this uh, and that, uh, and that could involve uh, things that don't have anything to do with the rest of the world. Is that true? I was a, I was, I did not know, actually did not know that. I thought that uh, Mr. Price was um, the district's attorney and not really necessarily the board's attorney. Um, uh, that, it's probably a good example of how we have evolved in general I make the request directly of Mr. Price. There are some issues where our uh, associate superintendents make the request directly because we've talked about it and they will say, you know, I'll follow up with Craig Price. Uh, in general, the board president does. If a board member asks Mr. Price, then he usually communicates with me and I uh, wittingly uh, <laughs> say, yes, please research it because I don't want to be out in the cold on that either. So, and, and the de facto, goes to the whole board. Yes. So, de facto, that uh, that legal question becomes one that a board member can ask because you know I don't want to be in the dark about whether it's legal or whether it's not legal. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Parker. Yeah, I've had those same questions, and when I do, I'm I'm sending it to the board president and the superintendent. Yes and saying, maybe this is a question for Mr. Price. Um, and yeah. I, they're always very accommodating. Thank you. <laughs> I have yes. not put you in the yeah. loop. I've, I've, That's OK. I knew that <laughs> policy. I didn't think of it. Yeah. Well, I think and that's a good policy. Yeah. I think that is a good policy. I think so, too. Yes. Yeah. I think we should all do yeah. that. May we invite a comment from Dr. Hayes? Yes. Yeah. Uh, as one of the directors here, I guess I just want to say that uh, for the large part, 98% of the times, I don't have any problems responding to any of your requests because they're usually things that you're going to need to know anyway at some point because you're pondering policy and they're perfectly valid requests that you make of me. And if you make a request of me that is way too much for me to do at the time, I don't hesitate to say no. I think the other directors do exactly the same thing. So I, I I think we're pretty well, um, you know, acquainted with the process and do a pretty good job of trying to respond to you as quick as we can when we can, but say no if we can't. So it, it seems to be working pretty well is what I'm telling you from my viewpoint. So. That's, that's probably the case because of your experience with it. But when we do bring in a new director, for instance, for special education, uh, and then we have a stakeholder group, and we have various board members with ideas, and uh, a number of times those people in those roles have come to us and said, my gosh, who, who am I working for? Uh, what do you want us to do? So, uh, of course, I do the best thing that I know to do. I send them to Robin and say, <laughs> sit down with Robin, identify all those things, prioritize, and if you have any questions, then come back to me on it. I would just, as a board member, would like to say it's fine if a staff person tells us, I can't get to it right now. Exactly. I mean, I'm, exactly. you know, yeah. as long as I know you read my request and, you know, it's on the back burner somewhere, if I understand there's other priorities. And, and our new directors should always know that they are free to say that to us as well. Okay, we'll share that. And it, it's, it's new, that word new is yeah. the yeah. operative word here because they they really don't know when they come on and they get a comment or a question from a board member if that should go right up here and